This portion of the recording covers Section 4, Typical Tools and Software Used in Practice. And I'll be starting off with macro-level um, simulation analysis tools. An example of these include Amy by Inro, VZoom by PTV, Amson Pro TDM, Cube Avenue, as well as Transcan. The main primary objective of using macro assignment and macro analysis to be able to understand the traffic demand patterns and the traffic demand uh, levels or volumes passing through the network. Typically, at a jurisdiction level, the whole jurisdiction is modeled into uh, software with the least, uh, and at least the uh, main arteries of the network is included. That is including uh, collector roadways at a minimum, um, as well as uh, roadways at a higher uh, class. In more advanced cases, you have some jurisdictions modeling at, uh, at the level of local roadways. Such modeling tools and software are capable to some extent on providing some preliminary network performance measures. However, these performance measures are just intended to be able to understand at a very high level the, the network's traffic performance and be able to uh, make high-level recommendations in terms of future roadway improvements that are applicable in TMPs and so on and so forth. However, these uh, analyses or these outputs are not typically used for micro-level uh, studies such as traffic impact assessments. Typically, the input um, of these studies could be used for uh, these studies, but not the output. And the input is pretty much uh, mainly the demand patterns. Moving on to MISO and micro simulation tools. Uh, generally, most micro simulate or a lot of micro simulation tools do have the capability of performing meso level assignment as well as meso level analyses. The meso level side of things is uh, most of the time an add-on or an additional subscription to the micro simulation modeling tool. Examples of that include PSEM by PTV, Dynamic by Inro, Amson Pro Micro and Pro Meso, Cube Dynasm, and Transmodeler. Developing a network using micro simulation analysis is quite um, resource and time intensive. And that's why it's quite difficult for municipalities and jurisdictions to model their network at a micro level accuracy. This is why mainly micro analysis tools are used at a project level, not at a jurisdiction level. On the other hand, some jurisdictions, such as, for example, the city of Edmonton, opted to be able to um, improve accuracy of the uh, macro analysis tools uh, that they are using, such as EMI, uh, by building a network-wide uh, MISO um, tool or MISO network using Dynamic, um, covering the whole city of Edmonton. And with that, the process starts with input from the macro level tool, which is Amy, um, in terms of um, providing an origin destination matrix that is uh, that becomes an input to dynamic, which reassigns traffic based on the user data uh, input, such as signal time plans and expected congestion patterns. Dynamic is able at that, uh, with that uh, to generate uh, preliminary but reliable results in terms of queuing um, intersection performance at the intersection level, as well as traffic uh, or travel times uh, between different segments and ends of the network. There are so many other tools that are used from day to day. Micro simulation tools are used for typically special projects where the use of typical capacity analysis tool um, w is expected to provide uh, unreliable results. For example, the use of micro simulation could be uh, very helpful when we are applying a um, ad grade light rail transit system that interacts with signals. That way, um, the signal timing is always changing because of the uh, impact of transit passing through that signal and transit pri priorities influencing the cycle links constantly. Most of the time, at typical projects, 
uh, practitioners opt to use uh, microanalysis um, or capacity analysis and optimization tools such as Synchro, developed by Trafficware, um, Vistro by PTV, Cedra, HCS, and Rodel. With Synchro and SimTraffic, uh, I should note that Synchro has an add-on for microsimulation, but it's a very preliminary level of microsimulation that is uh, with limited control, actually, on the parameters and inputs um, of the simulation. It provides a good tool where the capacity analysis could be questionable because, let's say, intersection conf configuration or um, unconventional control, like having a two-way um, stop sign at a or a three-way stop sign at a four-legged intersection, for instance. With that, micro, that preliminary microsimulation could be very helpful as the uh, capacity optimization software may not provide um, reliable results for such um, configurations. Other examples include software such as Vistro, developed by PTV, Cedra, uh, SCS, and Rodel. Typically, Synchro and Vistro are more reliable or accept, accepted in the industry to be uh, a reliable tool to be able to assess signalized and unsignalized intersections. On the other hand, Cedra and Rodel um, are uh, deemed to be more reliable um, as compared to Synchro and Vistro um, to, uh, towards modeling or uh, performing capacity analyses on intersections. As uh, uh, sorry, as um, uh, in terms of capacity analyses for uh, roundabouts. Um, as a side note, um, Cedra has a theoretical gap acceptance model that is developed mainly to handle um, roundabout performance, and the result is based on as well empirical data instead of uh, theoretical models. To the right of your screen, you'll be able to see a screenshot of uh, synchro analyses. To uh, the bottom is a sample of showing a corridor that is developed in synchro. And to the top, you'll be able to see the coordination plan where the uh, red uh, lines shown here at the mouse cursor uh, are reflecting the eastbound traffic in this specific case and um, traveling all the way through intersections. The idea of um, this diagram, this diagram is referred to as time space diagram, to be able to help practitioners be able to optimize offsets so that traffic can get through intersections or corridors with the least minimum interruptions. On the other hand, um, westbound traffic is represented in um, blue lines, and as you can see, if you follow up the progression, you'll be able to see where traffic mainly stops and where the sources of bottlenecks are. To the left of your screen, to the bottom uh, left, you'll see a screenshot of um, a roundabout model developed using Cedra. And um, you can control a lot of factors, uh, including, of course, the configuration of the roundabout um, and the lanes and the presence of slip by lanes and others, as well as be able to generate results. Those results are mainly reflected into uh, queuing per approach as well as delays and level of service. And with that, that covers uh, the end of section four. Uh, prior to moving into the actual examples uh, that we'll be going through, um, we'll be going through intersection controls within North American settings. 